My name is Lisa Goldberg. I am an associate professor and Caritas coach in the School of Nursing, Faculty of Health, Dalhousie University. The project that we'll talk about is queer rural birthing. When I use the language of queer, a lot of people don't know what that is. It makes a lot of people uncomfortable. It can be disrupting, which I think is a good thing, actually, because we need to disrupt our norms. Our norms are very much based around heterosexuality, and it's really important that we stop and think about that, particularly in healthcare institutions. For a large part of my um, professional life, I was a practicing perinatal nurse, and I think that was always something that, that I saw as kind of a gap. And so when I came to Dalhousie in 2004, I realized there was no one queer in the work I did. And when I looked to the literature at that time, there really wasn't much being done. And so what we did, uh, my colleagues and I, Dr. Megan Aston, who is also a professor in the School of Nursing, and an incoming PhD student, Jennifer Searle, and Dr. Sylvia Burrow, who is at Cape Breton University. And we looked at the stories, experiences, and narratives of uh, LGBTQ2S plus women across the province and their birth experiences. What was positive about those experiences and what wasn't so positive how we could understand those experiences and what might help us in the future, particularly as healthcare providers and nurses, to possibly think about things differently. I've left out a very important community there. I've left out trans communities. In the birthing project, we don't have anyone self-identified as trans. We have women who self-identified as lesbian, gay, bisexual, queer and two-spirit. What's interesting about me is I hold membership in both communities as a nurse and as a member of LGBTQ2S plus communities. If you just ask the question, why LGBTQ2S plus research? The evidence will show that the health outcomes of these communities are not what they are when compared to their heterosexual counterparts. So often, uh, our communities don't access healthcare until conditions become more acute. There is a fear of homophobia. The other piece that was really quite surprising is sometimes the healthcare facilities didn't seem to think that lesbian, gay, bisexual, queer, two spirit plus women were birthing in their institutions. Well, I can assure them that they are. And so what's happening where these conversations aren't being discussed? There's lots of potential for nurses and other healthcare providers to shift the environment and that collaborative practice is really possible, but it takes work and it takes knowledge of underrepresented communities and the historical harms that they have experienced and really starting to understand what that entails for your practices moving forward. I think nursing as part of our mandate, we are inherently committed to advocacy because we're everywhere in healthcare. There is no place in this province for discrimination, full stop. So as researchers, uh, it becomes really important to share our research findings. NSHRF has been key in funding my research from day one. The award I got was the KSSA award, which is about knowledge sharing and knowledge translation. And that has allowed us to put this into a play. You know, what would be something that would be artistic, would be emotional, and would really allow the stories to come to life? Theater was it. We have a wonderful pre-production person, Stephanie Kincaid, and a wonderful playwright, Annie Valentina. It was also important that all the actors be a member of, of queer communities because this is queer work. We're looking at late fall for the production. We hope that if we can secure more funds that we would also be able to take it across the province in the future and maybe even beyond.